Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Take on Info. I'm Scotty, with my co-host Cletus, and this is episode number three of Eek! The Electrical Engineering Class. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to kind of carry on with uh, AC power. In the last episode, it was DC versus AC. And in this one, I want to talk a little bit about uh, specifically AC, specifically three-phase power, uh, because it's, uh, well, you'll see. Um, in the last episode, we talked about direct current. Like if you have a battery, direct current flows in only one direction. It's kind of always flowing in a loop in this direction. Uh, alternating current reverses direction. Uh, say in Europe, you have alternating current. It's like a sine wave uh, at, say, 50 hertz. That means if you draw your little sine wave, it's gonna, uh, the current will actually go this way, and then this way, and then this way, reverse direction uh, 100 times a second, twice the frequency in North America. 60 hertz, so it changes direction uh, 120 times a second. Okay, and I briefly covered, let's take a look back here at our papers. I briefly went over, I showed this, you know, oh, you've got your phases, and for some reason there are three phases, right? Um, and I was also talking about transformers. So remember that uh, if you pass a direct current through a coil of wire, it creates a magnetic field. If you have alternating current, so it's going like that, then you have an expanding and collapsing magnetic field. So when you pass current through a coil, you get a magnetic field. When you pass alternating current through a coil, you get expanding and collapsing electromagnetic field. <clears throat> and when you have an expanding and collapsing electromagnetic field moving through another coil, that induces a current to flow. So that's basically the magic of a transformer. <clears throat> And you may remember that uh, I was talking about the, uh, the magic of the transformer where basically you can generate a voltage and you put it through a step-up transformer that kicks the voltage way the heck up. Uh, the, if the voltage goes up, the current goes down, and that allows you to have, uh, instead of a big fat wire, which you need for lots of current, you can have a much thinner wire, but at a much, much higher voltage. And that allows you to have power lines that are much smaller. Uh, so basically, yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, right, so why three phase? Okay, so if you look at power pylons like these, you have, uh, you notice the wires come in pairs of threes. Alrighty, the reason for that is, let's see, okay, here's our, here's our little generator, so let's draw a picture and let's keep this kind of in, in frame here so you can sort of quasi refer to it. Okay, so this is a very simplified representation of a three-phase generator. So you would have something like this at your power station. This little guy here is, in this case, for this example, it's a permanent bar magnet. Um, in practice, this is actually an electromagnet. And this guy, this little north-south magnet, is actually rotating inside here. And when he rotates, because there's a moving magnetic field, it generates current flows in these three coils. Right. So what actually happens is, if we look at our phase one here, uh, when the north is pointing it here, uh, to, like directly at this, this coil, again, this is very simplified, but it's kind of easier to understand. If we draw a little graph here for phase one, We'll do it like that. At this point here, when the north of this rotating magnet is pointing to here, we're basically at zero. And then as he, this will be the north side, as he rotates like this, when he's perpendicular to this guy, that the current goes up and you get a peak. And then as he rotates and south is pointing, he goes back down and he's at zero again. And then he rotates so the north is over here, and he goes to a peak again, and then as he rotates all the way back here, he goes back up, and you're basically back at the beginning of your sine wave. So that's how, that's a, a simplified example of how you get a sine wave. But of course, you also have these two other coils here. So, okay, what's the deal there? Well, when you look at this diagram, you notice we just drew basically this phase one. But there are three of them. So actually, you're going to have phase 1, and you're also going to have phase 2, and you're also going to have phase 3. So that's why we have P1, P2, P3. So 
essentially you'll end up with, this is kind of a quick and dirty, ugly drawing, you'll end up with your, your, uh, you know, da la la you know, some, something like that. You end up with basically, oh my god, all my caps are falling off. You end up with this. Okay, so why do they do that? Because that's a little weird, right? Well, the reason they do that is because you will note here that when you have, if we, if you add these three sine waves together, you've got your generator here and it's outputting uh, these, because of three coils and because of this rotating magnetic field, you end up with three sine waves and they're each out of phase. They're each delayed in time with respect to each other. Okay, which is kind of drawn on this pretty little graph here, right? But we notice that if phase one here is at 1.0, right? And phase two and three are at minus one half. So if you add them all together, you get zero. Same thing here, you've got minus one half down here. Plus a half, plus a half gives you zero. Same thing here, plus one, minus 0.5, minus 0.5, zero. So if you add these three sine waves together, you get zero, which it just so happens is your neutral. So if we go back here, we notice that all these coils here, you've got your your phase one, phase two, phase three output. If you trace it back, he goes through here, doo -doo -doo, gets wound around here, and then goes to this common ring, which goes to neutral. Same with phase two. Doo -doo -doo, the green one winds around, connects to the common, goes out there. Phase three, doo -doo -doo, connected to the common ring, and out. So neutral is your your common wire. But as we just established here, if you add these three together, your neutral is zero. Theoretically, if everything's balanced. Okay, but that's getting a little weird. Like, what's the actual point? Okay, the point is that if you have a single phase, you have, say you have like live and neutral, right? Live is also, it's a phase. And that's why they call them phases or live, because it's literally uh, three alternating current sine waves that are out of phase with each other. So 120 degrees out of phase, so they call them phases. Phase and live are sort of interchangeable, so you could say phase slash live. So that's to say that's your live or phase is your red wire, and your neutral is your blue wire. Okay, well let's say you want to send three times, this is a certain capacity, you have a live and neutral, and the current is flowing this way, this way, this way, this way, because it's alternating. But you want to send, say, two more, right? Well, then you'd need another live and another neutral and another live and another neutral. And that means you need another wire and another wire and another neutral and another neutral. And suddenly you have six wires. The beauty of three phase because of the way it's generated and because of the the time delay, the phase difference between the sine waves, that gives you this, this common point, which is neutral, which, assuming everything is balanced, then your neutral is essentially zero, which is essentially ground. So what that means is, instead of having to run six wires, what you can do is you can just say, you have live one, live two, live three, whoosh, and you don't even need a neutral, <clears throat> because the neutral is the common point, and ideally it's zero. So at the output, say, of your generator here, um, well, there's various things they do. Some, some countries, they do some different things. But basically, uh, your neutral, theoretically, is zero, so you can just kind of tie it to ground. Um, usually, you feed it into a transformer, or blah, blah, blah. And that's why... So, so the point here is that because of three-phase, because of the adding of the phases giving you this is zero all the time, instead of three pairs of wires, you only need three wires. So you can send three times the amount of power, but with way fewer wires. And you don't even need to worry about your neutral, because when you look at, at uh, power lines here, you'd have, like, say, phase one, phase two, phase three, and you may notice there are some faint lines on the very tops of the towers here. Those are usually grounding wires to connect the two towers together, uh, like an anti-lightning type of thing. Um, but essentially you have, you have your, you have like your, your phase one or line one, phase two, 
phase three, and the neutral, way back here at the power plant, they say like tied neutral to ground. So when these lines arrive at the location, you just, well, it, like I say, neutral is a little, that's kind of a touchy subject, but essentially um, they use the earth as the neutral because theoretically, ideally it's zero because it's the three sine waves added together. So you just go, oh yeah, we kind of use the earth as a conductor, essentially. The earth is sort of the neutral conductor. So you only need to run three wires instead of six. Um, hopefully that made some sense. If not, uh, post some questions. Um, the reason, the other reason why you, they do this three phase thing is because it's extremely efficient. Uh, when you have a single phase motor, it's okay. It works, right? When you have a three phase motor, like for industry, uh, three phase motors are extremely, they're, they're very smooth. You have like, you know, good torque characteristics and blah, 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 high efficiency. Like it's, it's, it's very efficient. It's so like for industry, uh, part of the reason that three phase was so awesome. First of all, you have the reduction in the number of wires. So you want to send three live and neutrals. Uh, you don't need six wires. You need only three technically. And then you can just derive your neutral from ground, you know, blah, blah, blah. So from six wires down to three plus just as this three phase generator is, is fairly efficient. If you put power back in here and were to essentially use a three phase motor, it's extremely smooth and efficient. Uh, and that's a, that's another reason for three phase. Now, just real quick here in, uh, when the lines actually come to say your neighborhood, they're fed through a transformer, blah, blah, blah. They derive the neutral. Blah, blah, blah. So of course you have, you have like line one, line two, line three, and you end up with a neutral, right? Oh, that looks like a W, but pretend it's an N. We'll re-scribble that. So, uh, basically sometimes like you have, say, you know, industry with your smokestack here, and then you have a podunk house here. That's a cow. He's a, he's, that's a farmhouse. You can't tell. And this is, you know, kind of like your, another neighborhood, right? Uh, so for industry, they usually always have all three phases. And we'll say neutral, just for simplicity. And if you live kind of out in the boonies, you may also have all three phases plus a neutral. That's, that would be like, you would have a three phase hookup at your actual electrical panel in your house. Uh, most of the time, especially like if you live in a big city or whatever, what they're going to do is, uh, you have like, you know, all these different houses here or apartments or whatever. And what they'll do is they'll say, uh, I'll just, uh, keep things a little bit cleaner. You have line one, line two, line three, and neutral. And what they do is they say, okay, let's give neutral to everybody. Same neutral, but let's give him line one, him line two, and him line three, i.e. phase one, phase two, phase three. So these houses are actually single phase. We'll use phi. And these are actually three phase. And that just refers to the number of actual, how many phases from your, from your three phase power generation at the electrical station. Do you have only one phase and neutral, or do you have all three phases? So like I said, for industry, much more efficient. They usually have three phases. They have massive equipment. It's great. If you live kind of out in the boonies, they often run, um, all three phases. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about what that means later. Uh, in another episode of Eek, when I go into electrical panels and stuff. But for most people, it's, you're always, it's always three phase power. You always have these phase one, phase two, phase three on these power lines, gets to the neighborhood, is fed through a transformer, step down, they get your neutral, and then they do one phase to this house, one, uh, second phase to this house, third phase to this house. And that's what we call a single phase hookup. Okay, I don't think I forgot anything, but that's basically... Um, the short version of what three phase is. One last thing I want to talk about is why not four or five or six phases? Um, 
actually, it turns out I read a very interesting article. There were studies done. Um, I'm not sure when it was, but there was a group, uh, I think it was in the US, they did a whole crazy complex study on instead of three phases, um, you know, like when you have your generator here, well, what, you don't need only three coils, you could put a fourth coil, you could put five coils, you could generate five phase power. Well, why did they pick three? Well, they went through everything and they, they quickly concluded that basically, yes, you can have one phase or two phase, three phase, you can have a quad drift phase or pentaphase system. Um, but each time you do that, you're adding wires and there are slightly different characteristics of each. And they ended up concluding that actually three phases is kind of the ideal because it allows you to transfer. Uh, it's kind of like the law of diminishing returns. The more phases you add, uh, the less actual benefit you're getting. So, um, yeah, it turns out that, you know, Tesla and all those crazy people, like they were right. Uh, three phases is, is it's kind of like mathematically optimal. It's optimal in terms of the amount of wiring you need, the, the cables you need to run and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, like I said, post in the comments, uh, for more techie tips, see Scotty's Tech Info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.